Hey church family, uh, we're here again today doing an interview with a marvellous, wonderful creation, uh, someone who's part of uh, HCC, so this is Hannah Thring. Hi! Hi Hannah! Uh, and so Hannah's um, currently in lockdown at her home, uh, enforced, no, uh, due to health reasons, so how's that been going? Um. It's been okay. It was it was it was a kind of weird situation. So I got a letter saying you have to stay indoors until July and you can't eat with your family and all of that stuff. Um, so that was that was quite um, an intense week of ah, what do, what do I do about this? How do I handle this? How do I keep myself mentally stable? Um, and um, so that that's that's been there for five weeks um, and. I mean, I didn't, I didn't handle it badly, but it was tough. It's, it's a really real thing and it wasn't something that I expected at all. So that was hard. Um, so but just tell I have... people what you were doing, because like you, were, you weren't at home and then you sort of popped home and then... Uh, yeah, home. so um, I, I was at uni. I came home to visit my family for Mother's Day on the Sunday and then was planning on going back home to uni on the Tuesday. Um, and lockdown happened on the Monday. So, so I, I stayed here. Um, so I don't have like my stuff with me. It's all still in my flat, um, in Oxford. Um, so, so that was unexpected. Um, and I spent the first couple of days kind of moping because all of the stuff that I would do in lockdown, all of my creative stuff, all my painting, all of that sort of, sort of thing, that's all still there. That's not, that's not here. Um, which was was weird because I was initially I was like oh brilliant I've got loads of time I can do painting and lots of bible stuff and all of that thing and that's all not here so so that was an adjustment and um but I, I figured it's lockdown I'm dealing with it the same as everyone else this is fine then I got that letter through and was like oh that changes things because it's it was quite um almost harshly worded it was very like you cannot go out in your garden and I was like oh no um so so there was five weeks of that and then yesterday I got another letter saying sorry for stressing you out turns out you're not as high risk as we thought so don't worry and I was like <laughs> okay so I, I was I was pleased but I was also like that was five weeks of my life that was just totally different to normal but actually that was really beneficial because it it's been a time of sitting still and um, spending time in rest where I wouldn't usually have allowed myself to do that because I would usually have been like, oh, I can do things. Or I um, you just said to me before we were chatting before about having a phone call with some friends from Harvest School and someone that Ashley said, mentioned that because I thought it was really great. Yeah, so, um, so she, so a lot of you guys will have met Ashley when she came for the Harvest School outreach and she, is very straightforward and she'll tell you how it is and um i was quite sort of convicted really because she said we've all been praying for a really long time for god to interrupt our lives for us to into strip it away for all that we can see to be him and and now we haven't got anything all of our sort of normality has been taken away and we're all continuously complaining about how difficult it is and it is but actually it's really important that we have this time to spend with God and to um, to be in a place that we haven't ever been in before um, and to appreciate that for what it is. Brilliant. So just give us a little bit, because um, probably quite a few people know, but you're a um, daughter of Jim and Liz, um, uh, sister to Isaac. Um, but just give a little bit of like your last couple of years, because of course you were sort of, I think, on the in a sense, normal track of you were doing your A-levels, you're going to go to uni and then sort of got interrupted. So give us a little bit of that. Yeah, so um, I was relatively new to HCC um, anyway. So we started, I don't know, maybe four or five years ago. Um, and at the time, you know, I'd grown up in church and I'd been to church all the time and that was kind of my lifestyle, but it wasn't something that I'd ever committed to or was wasn't really sure I believed in or anything it was just a kind of this is part of my life but it wasn't it wasn't my life it was just it was just it was just kind of add-on thing that wasn't really as much importance to me and um 
so when I became, I gave my life to God in 2016, um, was kind of a new start for me. And that's, that's the point. I sort of decided that it was going to be something that was really different and that it was literally for me like a old life, new life. It was an entire new beginning. Um, and, um, I remember we, we, there was a, a bridge night where we watched like a movie and I can't even remember what it was called, but it was all about, um, women who had like laid down their lives for God and their whole life was mission. And, um, so it had Heidi Baker on it. Um, it had Amy Lancaster on it. Um, and that really hit me quite hard. Um, and so after that, I came to you and was like, I don't, I don't want to have a life where I don't actually do anything with it. Um, and that was kind of a sort of kickstart for, um, deciding that I, I didn't want to do the sort of same thing. And I was just finishing my A-levels and I could have gone straight to uni. Um, and I didn't, I did a year out and, um, I spent a year with HCC and, um, did many, many various things. Um, and that's been really cool because actually now in the last year since finishing that, um, there's been various things that have come across that I've been like, oh, I learned that in my year out and I didn't really realize that I'd learned that. But now it's sort of come back and I'm actually really realizing it. So it's been a really, it was, it's been amazing because it was a year, but it's also following me and I'm still growing from it even a year later. So yeah, it's good. And then how have you sort of coped with, because in a sense, the, the year out and how we designed it, it sort of escalated in, in a great way in terms of God and um, what you were learning and experiencing and sort of finished on this, in a sense, high of going on this crazy harvest school to Scotland and Israel and Madagascar. Um, and how is it then, in a sense, coming back to normal life and then going off to university and it being in a sense very different what what's that been like um it's been it's been tough being honest it's been really hard um and i have i had a sort of six month period after harvest school where i had various stuff going on with like side effects of medication and things and also having come from this massive high and then just being in uni life and being just another student in the sea of students um and that was really tough that's been really hard but i also i think i god had already sort of prepared me for that in a way anyway because i'd when i was like 16 and all of that doing soul survivor that was a really big thing in my yearly calendar mm -hmm. and big church day out and things like that and i remember that being a this is a really big high but i know that when i go back to normal life my relationship with god won't be the same and that's really hard um so i'd done that for a couple of years and then really learned through my year out that it doesn't have to be an event or a single point that makes the rest of your year with god like a good thing it's it's not about highs and lows it's just a continuing journey and so i think if i hadn't done i like that those couple of years i'd really struggled with life with god is great at soul survivor and all of these are big events but when I go home it's just normal life and having to learn what my relationship with God looks like continuing whether I'm at an event or not really helped me later on because it meant that I came home from harvest school and I was like oh well I already know how to deal with yeah, cool. such a change in what life looks like um because it was fairly immediate it was i I my last bit of my harvest school journey was a month in Madagascar in a like a room with eight girls who were absolutely totally on fire for god fully mission drive all of that sort of stuff um and then i was in a flat with 10 people and there was drugs everywhere and no one wants to clean the kitchen and it was just a it was a very immediate trans transition from something that was fully immersive in jesus and everyone around you is in that place as well so in, in a sense, it's kind of quite easy to be there because you know that whatever happens, you've got encouragement from people who think the same as you. Um, and then to sort of nothing at all in a totally new environment. So it was very immediate, but um, I, I was really 
pleased that I was I had gotten myself to a place where I knew that my relationship with God wasn't shaken by what was happening yeah. under my feet, if that makes sense. Um, so it's been tough and it's, Harvard School is still, it was, it was the sort of pinnacle of the end of my year out. It was a, a really big thing because it was the first time I'd done something like that. Um, but looking back on it, I can also see that the whole year was so formative and I would not have coped with the harvest school if I didn't do that year first. Yeah. Um, so God's really kind and he, without me realizing, got me into a place where I could handle all the stuff that was thrown at me in the last six months um, because of all of the years before that he gave me in, in learning various new things. So Good. I think that's something that's so important for all of us is if we partner with God, he always prepares us. Um, we don't know it, um, but if we are willing to walk with him, he will prepare us for what's ahead. And there's yeah. something really exciting lying ahead for you, I believe, on the 5th of September. What's happening there? Indeed. I'm getting married. I'm married to, um, if you walk uh, uh, around um, a certain part of Highworth, you'll, sit, you'll hear a young man pining away. That's Luke. <laughs> who hasn't seen his beloved for, in the flesh for, for several weeks. Um, so you're getting married, which, of course, you know, for us in the West, it's, th- those are the toughest things, aren't they? That you've got your wedding and all of that stuff going on, and then suddenly you're not able to do so much prep or whatever. Um, how's that been? Um, again, it's been hard. It's been... Um, I found myself having to sort of protect myself from other people actually so in my in myself in my heart I'm at peace about it I know like the end goal for this wedding is marriage not a big day with loads and loads of people um but I have had so many people like what are you doing about your wedding what's the plan what have you paid for blah blah blah. and I'm like I'm just at the moment living like day to day like everyone else is um, and we're trying to make adjustments and plans, but it is really hard because we don't know what life looks like by September. Um, so it's sort of juggling that, um, that balance between, between me and God. I'm, I'm at peace with it and I've prayed about it and I'm not freaking out. Um, but I also know that if I respond to everyone's concerns, which are genuine and fair and lovely, but if I respond to all of those, then I will get myself into a place of like panicking about it. And I don't, yeah. I don't want that for my own sake. So um, it's, a, it's a balance. I've not got it entirely right. And there are some days where I'm like, oh, my days, what is happening? Um, but on the whole, um, it's something that I, you know, I've committed to trusting God with all of my decisions. And this is another one of them that I have suddenly no control over that I thought I would have a lot of control over um and it's just it's just another another one of those things that I'm totally putting my trust in him to sort out because I can't do it <laughs> come on yeah so good Hannah Hannah thank you so much for sharing um I'm, I'm encouraged anyway and uh, hey guys um remember to pray for Hannah and Luke especially um uh and just yeah and just trust in that they're gonna have a brilliant day but more importantly that god's going to use this time to prepare their hearts that they have a stunning wonderful incredible marriage so god bless you all and, and we'll see you soon